Okay, um, are we done or do we, are there more steps? Again. In what way? Nucleophilically? Yes. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. All right, so you've got this intermediate, um, and it was good that you didn't add or drop any carbons. And the reason that you know you haven't added or dropped carbons is because you used numbering. So it's very good that you're using numbering here. Um, since we didn't protate the nitrogen ahead of time, it now has a negative charge, which makes it very unhappy. But we know that's acceptable here because it allowed us to reform the carbonyl. That was the driving force that kicked off this poor leading group. Okay, um, now we're never going to end up with a negative nitrogen. That's never going to happen, so this has to protonate. What type of functional group is this? A hydroxyl. Yeah, it's a hydroxyl group. Um, now remember there's two possible forms the hydroxyl group can take. Mm. So is this the right form? No. Not in these conditions. It needs to lose a proton. Yeah. Well, who would be the best person to have take this proton in this picture? Why don't we just use the nitrogen to take the proton? Sure. Um, now, actually, the way you did it might be a little more realistic. Maybe it would be more realistic to have the nitrogen take a proton from the water and then to have the hydroxide take a proton from here, but it's an acceptable shortcut, just have okay. the nitrogen take this proton. That, that's the way people usually draw it. So that's an acceptable shortcut. Good. Don't uh, make sure you have the negative charge there to show what that's happening. You might want to cross this out since we decided not to do it that way. the sodium counter ion at this point. Whoops, that didn't come out right. Okay. <clears throat> so what we're learning here is the relationship between these two functional groups. Carboxylic acids have two different forms, protonated and non-protonated, and you have to make sure you have the right form in your final answer. Uh, and amines also have two different forms. Neutral or positive. Um, under acidic conditions, the amine would have ended up like this. But since we're under basic conditions, it ended up like this. An amine will never end up with a negative charge, though. That's not an acceptable final product. So we had to get rid of that negative charge. These are the only two possible ways it could have ended up. This is correct. And oftentimes, you can get both the carboxylic acid and the amine into the right form by having them interact with each other. So here we can kill two birds with one stone with this proton transfer. Then you were asking whether we could use another hydroxide to attack nucleophilically over there, over here. But at this point, that wouldn't make sense because we have this negative charge. Yeah. yeah, once we have this negative charge, this is not an electrophilic molecule anymore. So now we can be comfortable that we're done and we have the final product. We ended up with still only one molecule instead of two because even though the leading group left from this direction, it was still connected by the back door. All right, well, this is the type of more complicated problem that you're more likely to see on the test. So it's good that we had time to uh, go through it. And this is a case where I think it does help to go through the mechanism, although maybe you might try on your own, seeing if you could have drawn the product without the mechanism. Um, it's good that you identify that this was the L group. The one thing that gave you difficulty um, was protonating this, but that would not be consistent with our conditions. We don't want anything positive uh, under basic conditions. So it only protonated after it left. It protonated after it left because that just took it back to neutral, which is acceptable. So you were right that this was going to protonate, but we protonated, it protonated originally too soon. Let us give a name to this. What would be the, a, a good name for this? Um, 
I'm not quite sure. I know there's uh, five carbons. Mm -hmm. That's a good start. <laughs> and um, it's the end, the nitrogen that's messing me up. Okay. Now, the first thing we have to, well, we know there's five carbons. Yeah. What's the root for five carbons? Uh, pentane or penta. Yeah. So, pent. Uh -huh. Now we have to decide who's going to get the suffix. Well, which is the principal functional group on the right or on the left? Uh, the uh, the uh, carboxylate. That's the exact right name. The carboxylate. It's way more oxidized than this. Okay. Well, what would be the right suffix for a carboxylate? Uh, pentanoate. Right. So and because there's no double bonds, and we've been saying that the suffix is O8. That's the same as the suffix for esters, but that makes sense because a carboxylate looks a lot like an ester. So it would be pentanoate. Good. Now the part that you mentioned that was giving you difficulty was how to name the nitrogen over here. What type of functional group is this? It's an uh, and it's an amine substituent. That's right, amine substituent. Now normally we would name amino. that. Is it amino? That's right. Okay. Normally we would name this with a suffix, but um, since it's not the principal functional group, we name it with a prefix. And you remember, you know, there you go. We talked about that briefly last time. We did some examples where we had amino substituents or alcohol substituents. Okay. Yeah, I, I find out that I have the most problems with um, the problems containing nitrogen for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, those can be challenging. Well, uh, I think we've covered quite a few examples of that, so you can always go back and review those again, and we'll, we'll keep trying to, to look into that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, anyway, here's how to deal with this nomenclature. Um, when an amine, we've never really um, de de dealt with naming amines um, when they're the principal group because you haven't gotten to the amine chapter yet. But your instructor already wants you to know how to name an amine when it's not the principal group. Well, that's with the amino prefix. So we could say that this is a sodium 5 amino pentanoate salt. Okay. Copy this down and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, this was something that uh, gave me a little bit of difficulty on the quiz. Oh, this was coming up already? Uh, all right, well, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about this yet, but we'll talk about this now. Do you remember what the name, the general name for this type of functional group is? Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, this is something we talked about just briefly last time. Now, this is another type of carboxylic acid derivative that looks quite different from the other types. This is what we call a nitrile. What would be the full name for this? Well, let's see here. We have uh, two carbons, and we know that's usually named acet in the common system. Uh, and then the suffix would be nitrile. Um, and then for pronunciability, pronunciability, I guess. They stick in an extra O. And then it would just be phenylacetyl. Yeah, good. good. Phenylacetyl nitrile. Good. Notice how we just treat this like a substituent. Okay. Uh, well, he did cover um, nitron nomenclature on that uh, in the lecture notes too, so this is something else that's worth knowing here. Well, it's not too hard to remember this suffix. Nitrile is our name of the suffix nitrile. Okay. Now, these don't look like the other carboxylic acids. All the other carboxylic acids have this form, and this doesn't look like that, um, where this over here is some electronegative element. This is some electronegative element. This doesn't look like that. But it's still put into the category of carboxylic acid derivatives. And there's two explanations for that. First of all, how many bonds total does this carbon have to electronegative atoms? How many bonds total does this carbon have to electronegative atoms? Um, two. Now remember, this would have been an electronegative atom too. For example, in an ester or in an amide, it would look like this. So in total, this has three bonds. Three bonds to electronegative elements. 
And how many bonds does this carbon have to electric three? So even though they look kind of different, they actually have what's called the same oxidation state. So the oxidation state of this nitrile carbon is actually the same as the oxidation state of, say, this amide carbon. They both have three bonds to electronegative atoms total. All right. uh, this happens to have uh, one double bond and one single bond, whereas this happens to have one triple bond. Uh, but it turns out that the fact that they have the same number of bonds total makes them somewhat similar in reactivity. So even though this looks different, it makes sense to still put it in the carboxylic acid derivative category. 